Hello students, welcome to a lesson through the virtual training center of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher and in this lockdown period since we are not able to go to school children, we will be doing many lessons here online through the virtual class. So come on, let's proceed to our lesson for today. So children, our lesson for today will be a lesson in standard 7th. Subject will be English and the name of the lesson is A Crow in the House. It is lesson number 3.3 from your English textbook. Now children, read the name of the lesson again. It is A Crow in the House. So now you all know that the crow is a bird, but we hardly see a crow inside the houses of people. But in this story, you will see that it is about a crow, which is in one way or the other like a pet for a family. Alright, so this story is about an animal and it is also about a pet animal. So now when we are talking about uh, pets, let us look at some common pets which people have in their house. So some families, when there is the mother, the father, the children, along with that, they also have a few animals with them. And these animals, they complete their family. And once you have a pet at home, children, very soon we get very attached to the pet. We start loving the pet like our own member of the family. So people have some common pets here. These are some pets which are commonly kept by people in their houses. So you can see a picture of a rabbit, a cat, a dog. Okay. Some people they also have tortoises as pets and of course there are birds, there are fish. So all these animals are some common pets. So people usually keep these animals as pets in their house. There are some animals which are a little uncommon also. So some people they keep toads as pets. Okay. You can see some squirrels also are sometimes they become they almost behave like the pets of the house. That is when you call them they will come to you. Okay. They will come and sit in your hand. They will eat from your hand. They might sometimes stay in your house also. But these pets which you can see in the picture here, they are a little uncommon. Okay, you can see uh, the picture of a garden lizard also over here. There is a toad. Okay, and there is a rat kind of an animal also. So these are some uncommon pets. But very seldom we have seen people keeping crows as pets. But here in the story, you will see how by chance the crow becomes the pet of the family. Now, this particular story, children, is written by this person whose name is Ruskin Bond. By looking at the picture, you feel that he is not an Indian. But then, yes, he is an Indian author. But he was of British descent. That is, his uh, family belonged to Britain. He used to live with his adopted family in a place in Masuri in India. And Ruskin Bond has written various short stories, novels, etc. And most of his stories and novels are based in India. There is an Indian setting to all his stories and novels. So come on, <clears throat> let us see the interesting story of the crow in the house now. And let us see how this uncommon pet or how this animal, which people usually don't keep in their house as pet, ended up being a pet of a family. So this is a story of a young crow that had fallen from its nest and it was fluttering about on the road. Now we see this very commonly. Sometimes there are these baby birds which do not know to fly. They have not yet learned to fly, but they happen to fall out of their nests. And sometimes very sadly they die or they are eaten by some other animals. Okay. And if they happen to fall on the road, then sometimes they come under the wheels of the car or the bike, etc. 
So similarly, there was this young crow which had fallen from its nest and it was fluttering about on the road. It was struggling to survive on the road. Now it was found by the author and his grandfather. So you have the author here and his grandfather. They found that this crow is lying there on the road and they felt a little bad and then they decided to take it home. So they took it home and they started feeding it. Now see we know that uh, dogs they eat uh, pedigree, they eat roti and uh, milk. Okay, But sometimes we do not know what to feed crows, isn't it? So they somehow started feeding the crow. They started opening its beak and they started putting in a little bread and milk. Okay, And they started using a pencil also in order to open the beak and push the food into the crow's mouth. That means they started to take efforts in order to see to it that the crow survived, that the crow did not die. Alright, so somehow they started taking care of the crow and you can see how the crow came into their house. So that is why the story is called Crow in the House. So the crow is not an animal which you can see inside the house. But here you can see that the crow in one way or the other it has come into their house. Okay. Slowly now these people were taking very good care of him. They were showing, uh, showering a lot of love and care upon him. They were feeding him well. So slowly he started recovering and he made himself at home in the house. What is the meaning of making yourself at home? It means becoming comfortable. So the crow is not an animal which usually lives inside the house. It is not a bird which lives inside the house. But in this case, the crow started getting comfortable inside the house and he started recovering also. He started becoming better and better day by day. Now there was no way of getting rid of the bird. Now the author and his grandfather they did not mean to keep the crow as a pet. They just wanted to save him from the situation in which he was. But now the crow was not ready to go away from there. And these people could not think of any way to get rid of the crow as well. Okay. Anyways, the crow started living in their house as if it was a member of their family. And then they decided to give him a name also. So they decided to call him Caesar. Okay, so now we have a crow who was found on the road but now he is in the house and the name of the crow is now Caesar. So they started calling him Caesar. And you will see that Caesar just like any other pet was soon joining them at meal times. Now if you have a dog in the house you will know that the moment you sit to eat the dog will come and sit near your leg. Okay, so it will expect that you give it also, you share your food with it. So Caesar also started climbing on the table and sitting. Can you see here? The author is having his meal with his grandfather and Caesar is right there on the table wanting a share in their meal. Caesar was also a very, very naughty crow. So he started doing a lot of mischief around the house. He started to become a nuisance actually. What is a nuisance? A nuisance means someone who is making trouble for you. Okay. So Caesar started becoming a nuisance now. What did he start doing? He would hop across the table to empty a matchbox of its content. See what he has done to the matchbox. He has simply opened the matchbox and he has turned it upside down and all the matchsticks are now scattered. See, it is such a headache if someone does things like this. You have to keep on refilling the matchbox, isn't it? He would rip the daily papers to shreds. What would he do? He would tear the paper to shreds. Okay, shreds means small, 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 small pieces. He would overturn a vase of flowers. Now, wherever there would be a flower vase, and you know inside the flowers there is usually uh, mud the soil or there is water. So imagine if someone turns a flower vase over, the mud would come out and spread out all around or the water will spread out all around. So this is how Caesar started becoming a nuisance. He started becoming a troublemaker around the house. 
Now, what will happen if these kind of things are done by the bird or the animal which you bring into the house? Immediately, your family members will start telling you that leave this from where you picked it up. Go, leave it and come because it is causing a lot of trouble to us. Now, as it is, he was troubling the people in the house. He started troubling the people who were living in the neighborhood also. So, what did they do? They tried to keep Caesar inside a cage. You can see they bought a nice cage. And just like you keep parrots and lovebirds inside the cage, they tried to keep Caesar in the cage. But he was very angry. He did not like to be confined inside the cage. He did not want to live inside the cage. He was very angry and he objected with fierce cawing. And you know the kind of uh, sound that these uh, crows make? It is very irritating to listen to. Now what they had to do, he, he started continuously cawing and then he had to be released from the cage because they started getting a headache, the people in the house, because of the noise that the crow was making. Okay? He once again started running around in the house, opening the matchbox and overturning the ways and shredding the pieces of, uh, shredding the newspaper to pieces. Again he started doing all the mischief that he was doing. He also was back to troubling people. He started troubling the people in the house. Okay. He now started going to the neighbor's house also. And he started stealing small things. Like for example pens and pencils and ribbons. You can see how he used to enter the neighbor's house. If the window was open. He used to pick up all these things. And run back into his own house. And he started collecting all these things. Now imagine if your neighbor's pet starts doing this to you. What will you do? You will start taking objection. So now all the neighbors also were harassed. So Caesar became a nuisance not only for the people who were living in his house but also for the people who were living in the neighborhood. Alright? He even managed to snatch sweets from children. So you can see here there is a general store and there are children who are standing there and buying stuff for themselves to eat. Caesar used to see this, children having sweets and eatables in their hand. He used to fly and he used to snatch the sweets from the children. It was not as if he was hungry, okay, because the people in the home, they were feeding him well. He was just naughty, he was just mischievous. And then what happened, he would also steal the pegs from the clothes of the people. When you, keep, when you dry your clothes, what do you do? You put pegs on them. Okay, clips on them so that they do not fly off the clothes line or they do not fly off that wire. If they fly off the wire, what will happen? They will land on the soil, they will land on the floor and they will become dirty. Your mummy will have to wash it again. Now this crow, Caesar, he started stealing the pegs also off the clothes. And one day what happened was people got fed up of him and someone flung a stick at him. Okay, because he was doing all this kind of stupid work and it was troubling people, it was causing trouble to people. So someone one day flung a stick at him and it injured his leg. So now we have Caesar who had an injured leg. Now the author and his grandfather again they tried to help him out of the situation. So they washed his leg, they bandaged his leg. As best as they could. Okay. He got weaker now. And he even started refusing to eat. Because he became sick. He had an injury on his leg which was troubling him. So he started getting weaker and weaker day by day. And now he also started refusing to eat. Alright. Because maybe he was having pain in his leg. Maybe he was having fever because of the pain. He started refusing to eat. And one fine day, the author found him dead on the sofa. See, you can see, when you have an animal with you, when you have a pet, it is the saddest thing for the, pe for the pet to pass away or to die. When it troubles you, you feel angry, you get irritated. But then, in one way or the other, you love your pet very much. And one fine day, the author, when he found him dead on the sofa, you can see the face of the author. The author is really very, very sad. Okay? 
And what did he do? He dug a shallow grave in the garden and he buried him there. And along with him, he also buried all the toothbrushes and clothes pegs and ribbons etc. Which he, Caesar, naughty Caesar, had bought from other people's homes. Okay? And that was the end of the story for Caesar. So Caesar was a crow who was not even supposed to be a pet. But then the author had brought him home and he had given him lots of love. But then because of this naughtiness, the quality of mischief that Caesar had in him, he met with an untimely end. He had this leg injury, otherwise he could have lived for many, many years. Okay, so this is the story of the crow in the house. So how did you like the story? Hope you enjoyed the story. Alright, so now once you have understood the gist of the story now, so what you can do is you can pause the video here, you can open your textbook. And you can try to read the story once again from the book so you will understand the story properly. Okay children, so this was the story. Now as we usually do, we do the exercises also from the story. So come on, let's see what exercises are there in the story. So we are supposed to find out the antonyms of the words from the story. So which are the words here? We have motionless, captivity, frequent, dull, gentle, cooperated, deep and humble. So pause the video for a second. Try to find out the antonyms of these words and then come back and check the answers that I will just give you. So motionless. What is the antonym for motionless? Active or mobile. Okay, motional means something which cannot move. And active means something which is very, which can move a lot or which can does a lot of movement. Then you have captivity, opposite of captivity is freedom. Frequent, opposite is rare. Dull, opposite is bright. Gentle, it is harsh. Cooperated, is opposed. You either cooperate with someone or you oppose someone. Deep is shallow and humble is proud. Okay, so these are all the antonyms of these words from the story. Let's go to the next exercise now. You have to find out the synonyms. So antonyms means opposite meanings and synonyms means words that mean the same. So you can use a dictionary, they are saying. So come on, pause the video, use a dictionary and let's see whether you are able to find out the synonyms of these words. So disapproved is dislike. Bits and pieces means shreds. Achievement, the same word for achievement is attainment. Attracted is charmed. Nuisance is bother, mishap is accident, controlled, the synonym is managed and rebuke, the synonym is scold. Okay, so these are some vocabulary exercises from lesson number 3.3. Let's move on and see what other exercises are there. So now we come directly to the language study or the grammar part where we have complement, subject complement and object complement. But before going to subject complement and object complement, let's try to see what the meaning of the word complement is. So a complement is a group of words or it could be a word, you can also call it as a phrase, which completes the meaning of a sentence. Okay, so that is a complement. So let us see some further information about complement. So there are two types of complements in a subject, in a, in a sentence. It could be subject complement or object complement. So finally, what is a complement? It is a word or a group of words. You can also call it as a phrase which completes the meaning of a sentence. 
And what are the two types of complements? We have subject complement and object complement. Okay, come on. Let's see what a subject complement is with various examples. And let us try and understand the meaning of object complement also with various examples. So see, this we will see what a subject complement is. Let us look at the sentence first. So the box is a present. Okay. So see here, the box is the subject. Is here is the verb. A present is the subject complement. So why do we call this a present as the subject complement? Because it is identifying the box. So we already discussed that the box is the subject in the sentence and a present these words are telling you something about the box it is giving you some information about the box so it is talking about the box it is complementing the subject that is the box that is why it is called as a subject complement okay let us see one more example for your clarity the box again here we know now the box is the subject smells funny okay so funny is the subject complement why will we call funny as a subject complement because here the box is the subject again and smells is the verb how does the box smell the box smells funny so we are talking about the box which is the subject so funny is the subject complement all right because funny here is describing the box okay what kind of smell is coming out of the box or what kind of quality does the box have the box is, has got a smell, funny smell so that is why funny here is the subject complement okay see here some more examples he is a monster so he is the subject is is the verb and we are talking about him we are talking about the subject he we are saying that he is a monster so that is why this a monster which we can call as a phrase is the subject complement and like we discussed in the definition see this a monster is completing the subject it is completing the meaning of the sentence. Look at the next example on the screen for you. He looks stunning. See, we are describing the subject here. He, we are describing him. In the first one, we said he is a monster. And in the second one, we are saying he looks stunning. How does he look? He looks stunning. So, stunning here is the subject complement. In the first case, we have a phrase. That is, we have more than one word and in the second case we have just one word. so the subject complement can be a single word or it could be a phrase all right let us look at some examples now from the textbook so the underlined words and phrases in the following are subject complements i am hungry okay see the word hungry describes the word I which is the subject of the sentence next example my sister became a teacher so the word teacher describes the word sister which is the subject of the sentence these are all examples from your textbook okay children the word hungry and the phrase a teacher describe the subjects of the verb. Therefore, they are subject complements. Alright? So, I hope the idea of subject complement is clear to you. Now, automatically you can start connecting and I'm trying to understand what is an object complement. Okay? Something which gives more meaning to the object is an object complement. Come on, let's see how. So, a noun, a pronoun or an adjective which follows an object to describe it is called as an object complement. 
let us see the example but before that remember the object complement can be a noun it could be a pronoun or it could be an adjective and it will always follow the direct object and what will it do it will either rename it or it will describe it so every sentence children you know it has a subject it has a verb and it has an object okay this is the sentence structure of the sentence like we have learned in the lower classes so now any word or group of words which describes the object is called as an object complement let us look at some examples i found the guard sleeping so see here i is the subject found is the verb the guard and what was the guard doing the guard is the object here what was the guard doing he was sleeping so sleeping here is the object complement we all consider her unworthy so we is the subject consider is a verb her is the object what do we consider her how do we consider her we consider her unworthy unworthy is another word for useless okay so here unworthy is again the object complement okay an object complement comes after the object of a verb and it gives us information about the object so that is the meaning of an object complement once you have understood the concept of subject complement well children understanding the concept of subject complement object complement becomes relatively easier see look at these examples i found the guard sleeping in this case object is the guard and object complement is sleeping because we are telling you something more about the object we all consider her unworthy okay so her is the object and unworthy here is the object complement again we come back to some examples from the textbook so the underlined words and phrases in the following sentences are object complements the class made her the monitor so the phrase the monitor gives us more information about her okay and her is the object in the sentence the class is the subject in the sentence the teacher found my answer correct so here the word correct gives us sorry gives us more information about the object my answer so that is why correct here is the object complement all right children so in today's lesson we talked about ruskin bond and we talked about some common and uncommon pets and then we tried to see the story of the crow in the house after that we did some exercises also which are part of the lesson in your textbook so that is all for today so children wasn't that a wonderful video and did you enjoy watching it so if you want to watch more such videos in future then please like this video and also subscribe to our channel the mcgm portal for education and also hit the bell button so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video here thank you so much for now let's meet again soon